Uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, my name is Hunor. I am founder at Hydrogen Training Solutions and welcome to this webinar on PEM electrolyzer operation, including a uh, balancer plant. This is uh, going to be a um, relatively short webinar and I'll try to just get through as many as many things as possible in such a short period of time. Um, so, uh, so yeah, um, so my name is Hunor and I'm the founder at Hydrogen Training Solutions. And what Hydrogen Training Solutions does is uh, we help hydrogen organizations upskill their uh, teams and individuals for business growth. Um, so the reason this company exists is because a few years ago, when I first got into um, uh, the the electrolysis, uh, uh, you know, business in, in the uh, green energy sector, um, I have personally uh, really sort of struggled with finding the right information, the um, uh, information on how uh, these things work, how the electrolyzers work, just to make sure that we can. Um, uh, you know, uh, have the projects pushed through and things like that. And I've really struggled with finding uh, reliable information uh, on, um, on, on the electrolysis system. So what I thought to myself is that I'm going to just try to learn as much as I possibly can about these systems and just, uh, just make sure that, uh, that, that I can just help people, other people when they have uh, questions on these, these types of things. So because of that, I started up hygiene training solutions because I'm, I'm, I'm really keen on just helping people. Uh, with their journey and helping uh, people and organizations to sort of uh, be able to, um, uh, you know, uh, build the best uh, electrolyzer systems out there. So for that, what I do is I run PEM electrolyzer operation training courses. So this would be a two-day training course, and I've run a uh, hydrogen safety training course uh, uh, as well. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'll give you a bit of an introduction to the PEM electrolyzer operation um, and, and here's the thing, I'm going to try to do this in about 30 minutes, so I've got to really hurry up, but, uh, but, you know, this would, you know, to get into any sort of depth, any sort of detail would take about two days to go through. So that's what my training course is actually for. So, um, and then just personally, I just became a father last week. So that's just on sort of a, a personal note. So yeah, if you hear a little bit of crying in the background or anything like that, then that's because the baby's just next door. Uh, so, um, I won't be able to hear it because my headphones is, are, um, uh, you know, noise cancelling. So I'm not going to be able to hear that. Um, so can we just have uh, um, everyone just just uh, in the comment section just put where you're where you're listening from? Because I think we've got quite a lot of people. We've we've got um, we've had over a hundred signed up for this webinar. Can you just comment in the comment section what country you're from? All right, we've got UK, we've got Brazil. I think people are still joining. We've got UK, Germany, India, Turkey, Brazil again, Austria, Scotland, Uzbekistan, France. Wow. Loads of places. Brilliant. So, well, without any further ado, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go ahead and start USA, um, and I'm just going to try to, um, I'm just going to try to get through as as much as we possibly can in this sort of half an hour. It is it is a lot to cover. So what we'll be talking about is we'll be able to answer um, the, the question: What is a PEM, ele PEM electrolyzer? First of all. Uh, pretty obvious, right? Uh, and um, so we're going to be talking about, let me just get my laser pointer, we're going to be talking about, um, we'll, we'll have an overview of of the balance of plant systems for the entire uh, electrolyzer system. And then we'll have a brief, a brief look at the uh, subsystems. So we'll look at the electrolyzer stack, water purification system, hydrogen dryer, we'll look at the cooling systems. And, and uh, yeah, hopefully we can get through all of that. But if not, I might have to skip some things. I understand people's lunch lunch uh, time is not going to be more than about half an hour. But um, first of all, what is an electrolyzer? Well, an electrolyzer is a device that takes water and electrical power, and it uses the electrical power to split the water into its constituents, which are hydrogen and oxygen. So in an electrolyzer scenario, the hydrogen is kept. The oxygen is normally vented into the atmosphere. So um, there are... Uh, 
you know, a couple of uh, really popular electrolyzer system types. Uh, one is alkaline, the other one is PEM. Also, solid oxide. Um, solid oxide oxide and they're killing just really um they're pushing solid oxide uh, but today we'll be talking about pem uh, so pem stands for uh, proton exchange membrane and really the uh, the difference between these two is that uh, an alkaline electrolyzer uh, uses uh, potassium hydroxide as the electrolyte uh, whereas a pem elect a, a pem um, electrolyzer uses the pem membrane so the uh, polymer electrolyte membrane as the electrolyte or the proton exchange membrane, the PEM, PEM stands for um, poly polymer electrolyte membrane or proton exchange membrane. Okay, so um, proton exchange membrane, the advantages of that is basically you are not uh, using any harsh chemicals at around 25% of uh, uh, the the alkaline electrolyzer. Uh, the, 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 the solution is about 25% in the potassium hydroxide and you know, the rest is water. So um, you have to uh, and you have to use you know these harsh chemicals whereas with, whereas with pem it's just basically just pure water that is going into um into the into the stack so you're not having to use that you can run them at a very at relatively high current density so um what that essentially means is that you can have a much smaller system um also you can have a uh, well you'll have a very high uh, voltage efficiency um it's capable to hold pressure so you can generate hydrogen at pressure uh, without the need of a compressor up to hmm, the industry standard tends to be about 30 bars for uh, for for PEM electrolysis. So around 30 bars uh, used to be about 20 bars. Now around 30 bars, 35 bars is, is the industry benchmark. And you don't need a compressor for that. Um, and then there is a, a, a turn down ratio as well, which is a, a huge, huge um uh, advantage uh, what that means is you can turn it on and off very very quickly in fact you can turn it on and off um you can turn a pem electrolyzer on and off in around uh well less than a couple of seconds some systems even less than one second um and you can also you can also go up from let's say 50 percent gas generation to 100 percent gas generation very quickly as well um, and the hydrogen that will be coming out of a PEM electrolyzer is going to be highly pure hydrogen because of the purification systems in the uh, electrolyzer that we'll talk about in just a second. So, um, yeah, this is a plug power electrolyzer. It's a modular, um, um, you know, what, what you would refer to as a plug and play electrolyzer because all of the balance of plant is included in this system. So what you see on the right hand side over here is a transformer. You've got the rectifier and the stack inside of the container. You've got the air blast cooler, which is this is essentially just a radiator. Um, it, it cools down the um, the water that uh, you know goes into the stack so that we don't overheat this, the, the stack. Um, and then we have um, a process refrigerant a process refrigerant chiller, which is for um, Basically, it's essentially for gas cooling and uh, in some systems uh, also for the rectifier cooling. This here uh, is a power, is a uh, an ITM power electrolyzer. So uh, it's you know the same sort of thing. So you've got the stack, the hydrogen dryer, the water purification system inside the container. Uh, you've got the air blast cooler on this side, which is cooling down the process. Uh, well, the 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 water for um, the, that that goes through the stack to 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 make sure that you keep the uh, the stack uh, cool, um, so it, so it doesn't overheat. Um, uh, this is because of the you know because of because of the you know some of the inefficiencies. So the the there's going to be quite a lot of heat release during electrolysis. So you've got to get rid of that heat. So that's what these these uh, um, air blast coolers are for. Um, and then on the other side, you've got a refrigerant uh, process chiller. So this is going to be for uh, the rectifier um, in some cases, but definitely for the um, for for, the, for gas cooling. And we'll go into why we need that in a second as well. Um, so what's missing from this picture is a PS, is the power supply in it, which is a transformer and a rectifier. And then over here we've got a Nell um, one. This is pretty similar as well. Um, I'm not going to go through this one uh, in, in detail because uh, we just need to move on. But uh, this is the PSU. You've got the coolers. You've got the all, you know, all the other bits of balance of, balance of plant inside the container. So the question is this, though. What is inside the container, 
right? Well, I've got um, a, I've got a diagram for you here. So uh, this is um, just a very uh, um, basic, you know, version of what uh, what is inside the container. So we've got the water in. So this is normally going to be tap water. So it's it's going to be Still, still going to be relatively clean water. It's drinking water, basically, but it's not good for uh, PEM electrolysis. It's not good for electrolysis whatsoever. Um, and we'll go through why it's not really good for electrolysis for electrolysis in just a moment. But basically, what you've got here is a water purification system. So it has to go through this water purification system. And most uh, electrolyzers uh, will want this water purification system to get the water conductivity down to less than uh, 0.2 microsiemen per centimeter. Uh, and uh, and and basically the the tap water. So where I am at, at in the UK, um, tap water it does vary, but it's around 500, 600 microsiemen per centimeter. But it does vary um, in, in the tap. So that's really not good for electrolysis. I need to get it down to 0.2 microsiemen per centimeter, which means that it's just going to be extremely extremely clean uh, deionized water. And then the water from there is going to be pumped into the oxygen water separation vessel. Um, and from there, you will have a water circulation pump pumping the water into the PEM stack. And the water will go into the stack. And during electrolysis, you'll have water and oxygen come out of the stack on the anode side. So this is on the anode side of the stack. And, and then you'll have water and um, uh, and the oxygen go back into the oxygen water separator. The ox the water will go down to the bottom. So I'm just going to get my pen. So the water, there's going to be a line here. Sorry, it's red. It should be, well, this is water here. So the water is going to be down here on the bottom. And then you'll have the, uh, you know, the water come, you know, flowing back into this, uh, into this vessel. And actually the oxygen will go out and it will just be vented through a vent line. Uh, so that's for the oxygen and then <clears throat> um you have the hydrogen let me get my there's a pointer one second and you have the hydrogen uh come out of the uh of the stack through this line so um what you've got to understand here is because of the way PEM electrolysis works, this is normal on any PEM electrolyzer, um, you will have quite a lot of water, liquid water coming out of the stack with the hydrogen. So basically, um, um, and we'll go into that in just a second if we have time, but um, the, the water and the hydrogen will go into um, um, into this uh, vessel called the um, hydrogen water separation vessel. The reason we need this is exactly because there's, there's, there is water, there's liquid water in the hydrogen. Um, and we we have to, uh, let me just get my pen here. So we, we have the water um, level around there in this vessel and the um, the, the hydrogen and the water is coming up. The, hyd the hydrogen will bubble up to the top. So the hydrogen will, bu will uh, bubble up to the top and the water is going to stay on the bottom. Well, the hydrogen will, that will bu uh, bubble up to the top, um, and let me get my, there's a pointer. Uh, the hydrogen that will bubble up to the top will exit on the top and it will go into the next stage. And actually the water here is still just really just pure water. It's pretty just, good quality of water and what um, you know, these electrolyzers do is they pump or you know they, they push back the water to be reused because we would just be wasting a whole lot of water otherwise because uh, you know we need to be able to just reuse um, uh, we need to be able to reuse this water in this uh, in this vessel um, and um, and as well, and really advanced electrolyzers. There's also some other uh, methods of making sure that uh, you know no hydrogen actually goes back into uh, the oxygen water separator because that would be really dangerous. So you know that's why um, uh, these um, that's why the electrolyzers are built in a way that uh, you know there's some extra systems in place over here to make sure that the um, the hydrogen cannot go back into the oxygen water separator for safety for obvious reasons for safety reasons. Um, but we just don't have time. To to go into that at the moment um, because we only have half an hour. So 
the hydrogen will go into the next stage and this is still not pure hydrogen it's um it doesn't have any liquid water anymore in it but it's still not not very pure hydrogen it still has a quite a high uh, dew point uh, which means that it's uh, it's got quite a lot of water in it as well uh, so the gas will then go into the deoxidizer which uh, sort of preemptively just gets rid of any oxygen that's in the elect that's in the uh, hydrogen and uh, the any water that's in the hydrogen, what the what the deoxidizer um, uh, does is there's a catalyst in there, and the, in the presence of that catalyst, when there is hydrogen and water, it will make them uh, join, and it will just uh, sorry hydrogen and oxygen, and it will make make the uh, hydrogen and oxygen join. Thereby, it will get rid of the oxygen, and it, there will be a slightly higher uh, amount of um, um, of water uh, content in the hydrogen. Uh, so uh, because of that, there is actually some, um, you know, these vessels are oftentimes heated, slightly heated, just to make sure that there's an, there's an over, um, that, that there's a positive temperature in, in this vessel, just to make sure that there's no condensation taking place at this point. We do not want, we want condensation here. We do not want condensation here because it, uh, the, the condensation can, um, uh, damage the, uh, uh, the the catalyst that's in this vessel. And you don't want that. Uh, this catalyst is really expensive, actually. Um, and then from there, we've got a temperature swing uh, dryer. Um, so uh, the, the 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 it's actually pretty complicated. We're not we don't have time to go into how these actually work, but just uh, the, just in a nutshell, uh, the the way these work is the gas goes into um, one of these desiccant vessels and uh, it goes into the desiccant vessel and a lot of the the moisture is is adsorbed chemically adsorbed not absorbed but adsorbed uh, chemically um, into the into the cat by the catalyst and what happens is um, when this catalyst um, it, on let's say on this side on in dry vessel number one is fully saturated then uh, which might take about I don't know two, three, four hours to get these fully saturated. Then what will happen is the this vessel here needs to be re um, uh, 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 just regenerated, and the way it's regenerated is uh, the regeneration is done by basically heating it up and cooling it down. Um, but while that's going on, you want to use uh, dry vessel uh, number two to dry. Uh, while dry, dry vessel number one is being regenerated. And then the hydrogen coming out of these vessels is just going to be really pure hydrogen, uh, you know, down to the part per million, even part, down to the part per billion level, depending on, on the, what the hydrogen is, is needed for. Okay, so um, in the PEM electrolyzer cell, we've got, uh, you know, we've got water going in, uh, we've got water, water and oxygen coming out. And basically, this um, cell, the way it works is we've got the polymer electrolyte membrane or the proton exchange membrane in the middle. And when you apply, when there's water in on the anode side of the vessel, so the left hand side over here is the anode side of the vessel. When you have water in there, uh, something very, and then there's electrical power applied to it, something very interesting will start to happen. So basically, when you, when you apply the electrical power and you go over the threshold voltage, which, um, well, de depending, uh, it's going to be around 1.48 volts, but in reality, it's going to be more like 1.6, 1.7, something like that. But, um, um, I, I mean, outside of a, of a lab sort of environment, it's going to be different, isn't it? Um, but uh, once you reach the threshold voltage, something very interesting will happen. From the water, you've got H2O, the... Uh, hydrogen is one proton, one electron. The uh, on on the water uh, molecule, the uh, when you apply the threshold voltage, the electron will split off from the proton on the hydrogen. The proton is positively charged, and because we have a proton exchange membrane, the, the membrane allows the protons, you know, to go through to the other side. And the proton is positively charged, and the anode side is positively charged as well. So the proton is going to go over to the other side of the membrane, and the um, the, the uh, el um, electron is going to go through the electrical connections over to the other side of the membrane, and then the one proton, one electron will uh, join up and form a hydrogen uh, molecule, two hydrogen molecules, are, uh, sorry, a hydrogen atom and two hydrogen atoms are a hydrogen molecule. 
So that's just basically, that's just essentially how it works. Um, and um, you've got to have the hydrogen and water out over on, on this side, and then you've got to have the DC power, which we've talked about. So that's where the stack is, just to give you a bit of context and try to connect, trying to uh, connect the lines here. Um, okay, we're really running out of time. I'm gonna try to um, uh, go through as, as much of these as we possibly can because I would like to leave uh, some time for questions at the end as well. Um, so water purification system, well, um, yeah, the water purification system, the way it works is you've got, first of all, a water a softening unit. You've got a particulate filter in order to uh, make sure that uh, there's no, um, you know, just, just bits of dirt going in from the tap water. And then you have reverse osmosis membranes. So uh, the reverse osmosis filters are going to... Um, uh, you know, take out a lot of, uh, you know, the, um, the, the, um, organic compounds out of the water. Um, and, um, you've got, uh, the mixed bed, the I resin. So once, so in this sort of order as well. So first you've got the reverse osmosis, which will get the water conductivity down relatively low, like, I'm talking about 30 to 40 microsiemen per centimeter, maybe a bit lower if you've got really good reverse osmosis filters. And then you've got the um, the, the mixed bed DI resin, which will, uh, which is essentially a catalyst that will just get, you know, just get your water to be completely sort of this, uh, to, to be completely um, demineralized. So, um, yeah, this is the water purification system. This is just a, 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 a skid, just to get you a, an idea of what these uh, skids would look like. And then again, we've got the water, water purification system over here before, uh, after the water goes in from the tap, uh, before the water goes into the um, uh, the, the um, oxygen water separation vessel. Okay, so we've got the hydrogen dryer. So these are temperature swing desiccant dryers. So this is what uh, it, it looks like. Um, and uh, there is uh, a desiccant in this vessel. And um, the, the desiccant is uh, just, you know, going to remove uh, so much of the water uh, just by the gas passing through the desiccant that the gas purity is going to go going to go down to uh, basically the, to the parts per million level. Um, or even down to the parts per billion level if, if required, but most uses don't require that. So most uses just re require sort of the um, parts per million, um, let's say a couple of, let's say two parts per million for, for, for a fuel cell, for example, uh, when, when you're trying to pressurize the gas to let's say 900 bars, uh, case of a hydrogen refueling station. Um, and there is no, there are no gas losses uh, during the regeneration either. So basically, you use the, you know, you, you dry the gas, you, you dry the gas with the desiccant. And once that desiccant is fully saturated with water, you can get rid of the water by, um, um, you can get rid of the water uh, to regenerate the desiccant just by uh, putting the high temperature uh, gas, high temperature hydrogen gas um, through through the tower while using the other tower to uh, actually um, do the um, regeneration. Uh, sorry, not the regeneration. To to you, you're you're regenerating on one side, and then you're you're using the other uh, the other tower to um, uh, to actually dry the gas. Okay. Um, so the next one. Uh, we're going to talk about is the cooling system. So in in the in in a lot of uh, so so in basically in all electrolyzer systems you've got uh, the cooling system at sort of this uh, this uh, place. So just after the pump in, in most systems you've got it just after the pump and just before the the water goes into the PEM stack. And um, so there's a, a heat exchanger in most systems. There's going to be a heat exchanger from the water. Uh, to transfer the heat over from the water into a coolant liquid uh, that doesn't freeze, and so it's an, an antifreeze coolant liquid, which will then go, uh, which will then flow out outside to where this uh, air blast cooler is at, um, where you know this is basically just a giant radiator, and it will um, cool down the um, 
cooling medium, which will then, uh, you know, the, with this plate heat exchanger, uh, cool down the, the water, and that will then cool down the stack. Um, yeah, and we'll look at the cooling system also for, you know, we've talked about before that this, there are two cooling systems. So one of the cooling systems is going to be for, um, uh, for the um, um, for the hydrogen purification system, and this is so the other the other cooler was uh, like I said just a radiator, and this one is going to be a refrigeration uh, a cooler. So um, that is used to cool down gas in order to promote condensation. So in um, some electrolyzer some electrolyzer systems, you're cooling down uh, the gas um, before your um, um, you're cooling down the gas coming out of the of the stack uh, to promote condensation before the gas goes into the hydrogen water separation vessel. Um, so some systems do that, some systems don't. Um, but definitely, what uh, what all systems do is on the dryer. There is going to be um, a, um, a, a cooling requirement um, in order to try to get as much of the water out before the gas goes into the uh, desiccant of the towers. Uh, in all, uh, so the way that's done is just by cooling it down to make sure that there's uh, that there's condensation, um, so that as much of the water uh, comes out of the system of the uh, as much of the water comes out of the gas uh, via condensation as possible. And then we're going to talk about uh, the power supply unit. So essentially what um, uh, what the power supply um, unit is, is uh, let me show you this, uh, is there's going to be a transformer. So a step, a step down transformer. Um, sometimes the incoming voltage is going to be 400 volts. A larger electrolyzer is going to be 11 kV. Um, and um, the there's going to there's going to be a step down transformer to make sure that the the um, um, the AC power. So this is an AC to AC, obviously step down transformer. The AC power is at the right, uh, um, uh, you know, at the right voltage uh, that the rectifier can take in. And then we need a rectifier because electrolysis only works with um, with DC current. It does not work with alternating current. Um, so um, we use a rectifier. So what a rectifier is, is a device that takes AC uh, power and converts it into DC power. So uh, let me just show you this, elect this pic a picture of this electrolyzer. So this is what you see here. You've got the transformer there and then you've got the rectifier there. Um, and then, yeah, again, you've got the two chillers on top and the rest of the balance of plant is inside. And I'll, I'll show you a picture of that now. Um, lastly, and um, yeah, so what you see here is um, there is, so first of all, let's talk about the, the right hand side here. So there's the uh, control room here. So this is where the uh, human to machine interface is going to be, the HMI, uh, a lot of the, you know, the control uh, systems. There is going to be a pneumatic system because over here on this side, so there's a wall, there's a wall there, an ATEX wall over here between the, uh, between the control room and then uh, the you know the rest of the balance plant, um, and um, you you know you want to have um, yeah this is sort of a slightly different topic but basically you've got um, you, you know you you you've got to have uh, ATEX um, you know you've got ATEX zones in here so you've got to make sure that the instrumentation and uh you know valves and controls over in on in this room are all ATEX uh, compliant so uh, what a lot of electrolyzers will do is it will they will have a pneumatic system where the uh, solenoid valve controlling the pneumatic valve is going to be um in the control room which is a no zone uh in in most you know it, it's going to be a no zone and then the um Actu the actuator, so the the valve, the pneumatically act uh, the pneumatically actuated valve is going to be, um, you know, there's, there will be pneumatically actuated valves which are controlled by the solenoid valves over here. So in this system, you've got the um, the water purification there. You've got uh, 
the the stack over there you can kind of barely see that um and you've got the hydrogen um dryer over here you've got uh, the um um uh, hydrogen water separation vessel and then you've got the heat exchanger there you've got the circulation pump there so yeah hope that uh, that that gives you a bit more insight to how a PEM electrolyzer works um in half an hour this you know this sort of high level uh overviews is all we can do in, in half an hour so yeah this it would take around you know two days to, to sort of go through in a train in, in the context of a training course this entire system in in the relative detail where uh, you know we're going to into relative detail in all into all of these systems so um yeah i've, I've hoped i hope uh, you've enjoyed uh this session uh at this point what we'll do is um uh is we'll we'll answer a couple of questions if we have any question um and um uh, my colleague max is going to read the questions and i'm just going to bring you in max if that's okay hello max yes hello there um there are three questions from uh, Mr. Semri. And the first one is, manufacturers include kilowatt hours per kilogram stack efficiencies. Isn't kilowatt hours per kilogram directly related to the electrolyzer operation voltage? Nominal operating voltage varies between manufacturers, but the maximum capacity of all of them is around 2.1 when calculated from catalog values. Don't you think that nominal kilowatt hour per kilogram values are misleading in a sense? Um. It depends how you how you define that. So when you talk about um, yeah, so m most of the um, the cost for running an electrolyzer about around two thirds of the cost of running a PEM electrolyzer is uh, going to be directly related to the electricity costs. Um, it, yeah, it can be misleading. There were quite a lot of numbers, but my answer is yes, it, it can be. It can be. It depends how you this how you define it to me. I hope that answers the question. Okay, there's another one. At large systems around 50 to 100 megawatts, do you use cooling towers instead of radiators for stack cooling? Or do you use a chiller system for stack cooling and hydrogen purification? Uh, most systems, um, so yeah, uh, we most systems, and you know, it does vary system by system, but most, most systems uh, would use uh, for cooling um, the, the the process so the, cooling the water down uh, for that goes into the stack so what we call you know a lot of people call it process water um, you know companies don't generally use refrigerant chillers for that unless especially for large systems because that's just extremely expensive uh, there's just uses for uh, th there's just um, you know the cooling is done by just uh, air blast coolers just large air blast coolers massive air blast coolers or or just multiple air blast coolers uh when we go up to a uh, 100 megawatt it's just the same it's just larger air blast coolers we're not going to use refrigerant chillers for that um for smaller electrolyzers i've seen refrigerant uh, chillers used in for example the australian outback or uh, just very hot places where the temperature you know where you're trying to electrolyze at, you know when the temperature goes over like 45 degrees celsius but you don't want to do that because that just you know when you turn on the the air conditioning unit at home you know it's really expensive you don't want to pay for that electricity so you want to keep it as as cheap as possible hope that answers the question uh, and he has one last question have you ever coupled a solar power plant with the pem system directly with the dc to dc converter uh, yes, that has happened in the past. I've I've seen that on uh, on. So it was a smaller scale electrolyzer, but yeah, I've seen. I think it was um, a two hundred kilowatt electrolyzer, if I remember correctly. That was I've seen that a few years ago. But uh, yeah, that's that's right. Okay, we have another question from a Mr. Ram Babu, and he says uh, supplying water to both anode and cathode. How does it affect the performance? Um. Supplying water, so I, I there's, there's, I, I, so I, I assume he means, um, I assume he means uh, putting water in on the cathode side as well. So what the way I've, I've, um, the way most electrolyzers uh, and probably all electrolyzers, actually large scale electrolyzers, are are working is they only they only cool down the, um, the oxygen side, so only the anode side. Um, 
it, the thing is, if you put water also to cool down the cathode side as well, then you've got to like to take out that water as well. And um, and here's the thing: you you, you know, it, it, unless you go up to a crazy um, high uh, current density, you don't really need to cool that side down because the oxygen evolution reaction on the anode side is going to be much less efficient, much much less efficient. So there's going to be much more waste on the uh, on the anode side there's going to be much more heat generated on the anode side uh, whereas on the cathode side the HER or the hydrogen evolution reaction that will consume less power so there'll be less waste uh, which means that there's going to be less heating on the on the um, on the cathode side so um, I, I hope that that's what the question was okay I think that's it for questions um, but I might ask one myself which is um, the PEM is a reversible process, so you can combine oxygen and hydrogen and generate electricity through that. And that's the basis for the cars running from hydrogen fuel cells. So um, an electrolyzer is generating hydrogen. You can use a similar concept. So you can use a PEM, a PEM fuel cell, which um, um, which will be, well, it will, the it, it will be it will be built uh you know slightly differently so there's going to be uh, different catalysts the catalysts are basically going to be in the other on different sides and the the membrane is going to be different it's going to be much thinner but uh basically an electrolyzer the way an electrolyzer is built is only to uh um to generate hydrogen yeah. okay i think Rababu says thank you yeah, fantastic. Uh, so, uh, guys, thank you very much for joining in. We've overran a little bit, um, but, uh, you know, it was a really sort of complicated uh, subject. Uh, and, uh, yeah, thank you very much, everyone. And uh, if you can, uh, just, you know, put a reaction uh, or uh, just put a comment uh, for what, what you've liked. And, um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it and have a lovely rest of your day. Take care. Bye.